Hey, what's up, guys? Norchetto here. Thanks for stopping back in. So uh, it's been a pretty big week. A lot of things have been going on, uh, some big, some small. So let's go ahead and dive into the DeFran situation because I have not had a chance to go over this. Um, this is, for the most part, wrapped up, but I did want to give a few thoughts on it while it was still fresh in a few people's minds. Uh, for those that are unaware, what happened was uh, DeFran was on stream. He was playing Mercy and not performing well he said he was expanding his hero pool but with the way he was was playing and stuff it was it was pretty clear that there was more going on than that um people were accusing him of throwing but you know he, he was spending a lot of the stream talking about how games weren't fun to him overwatch wasn't fun to him no games were fun to him and how you know what if he quit his or got out of his contract and quit overwatch completely uh, at the end of his stream, he ended up uninstalling the game, saying his contract was over. He even uh, tweeted out a message saying, The end. I hate the game. Thought I could love it again and have passion, but it's impossible. I always end up soft-throwing. Contract ended. Overwatch uninstalled. McDonald's, here I come. For real, though, thanks for everything you've given me, Overwatch community. So this was pretty serious. It was it was pretty scary knowing that, you know, we, we all know that DeFran has had a history. He's had a background of, of making some some uh, poor decisions and doing some things, some questionable things. Um, but I don't think anyone expected anything to happen like this so soon after being announced. I think it was 11 days after the contract was signed. Um, a couple days later, he did come back on Twitter and say, and he said, um, still in Atlanta rain, didn't quit like I said, I messed up, don't know what to say except sorry to the community, my fans, and Atlanta. It wasn't a debate, sometimes I have these days and make dumb mistakes. Going forward, I'm going to stream less and focus on making myself and my team better. Now, for those that don't know, DeFran has come out and said he is uh, bipolar. And one of the things that uh, you know people who are bipolar have to fight with and deal with is, is this cycle of very high highs and very low lows. And you know that, that doesn't necessarily excuse the actions, but it explains the intent behind what happened. Um, so you know he wasn't throwing on purpose. He was literally caught in a... Um, in one of his downward spirals and and you know he he lashed out and, and the way he did it was lashing out against he kind of self-destructed he you know he wanted to get away from anything that he had been causing him any stress including this massive contract having to move to north america he he just you know broke down a little bit and i think it was highly self-aware to come back and say that um, he makes dumb mistakes and he wants to stream less and focus on making himself and the team better because that right there shows that, um, you know, when it comes to mental health issues, you can't just straight up punish people. Um, or, I mean, you can, but you're, you're not really helping anything because even someone who is taking medication or is going to therapy can still have struggles and can still mess up and, and, it still fights with these demons. So, you know, for everyone saying that, you know, he's had no support and no help, DeFran has been improving himself year over year. Um, I know he's quit, I think, smoking, and he started drinking nothing but water, and he's really been trying to improve himself, and just because there was a breakdown like this does not mean that he has been doing nothing and has no support system. So, um, so yeah, this, this is just... Honestly, it's just something bad that happened with someone dealing with some mental health issues. And I think a lot of people recognize that. And I, uh, I very much respect anyone who recognized that this was more about the player than, than anything else. Um, big shout out to uh, Fran, our, our resident streamer, for, um, y you know, when this happened, a lot of people were going out of their way to find members of staff and other members of the team to say, what's going on with the Fran? What's going on with the Fran? And from what I understand, Fran was streaming and people were asking her and she just said you know people need to be less harsh on him people need to give him a break he, he's already come out and said he's bipolar clearly he's dealing with some stuff you guys need to leave him alone and that's that's huge that that's amazing for for a friend to stand up and and i think we should all be happy to have someone like that in the organization but um as as far as all this goes to friend is back on the team any actions he took while questionable and drama filled for sure he didn't actually hurt anyone uh, a lot of people i saw you know comparing him to xqc considering they're both very both very high profile streamers that have uh, been having some drama but the thing to remember about xqc was that a lot of his drama was directed drama it was um you know he would rage at people and he would insult people and it, it was more like he didn't have a filter 
than anything, but he was lashing out at people. DeFran just kind of self-destructed. Um, nothing he really did was taken out on anyone in particular. You, you could argue the team um, just by being uh, unreliable, but again, he's he's dealing with and struggling with things, so it's, it's not necessarily completely in his control. Um, I really hope the team as a whole, in, including all the players and staff, are showing him support. I'm sure this is hard for them, um, but I, I really hope they're using this as an opportunity to come together rather than pull apart. And I really hope that um, all organizations and all team members from all the teams and, and Blizzard, I hope they're looking at this as yet another sign that um, all of the players and staff and teams need uh, mental health support. I, I know I said a few weeks ago that um, you know we had heard about you know potentially a, a team house and a chef. We need a sports psychologist too. Um, and this is the exact reason why. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much my thoughts on the topic. I'm glad that he's doing okay. I'm glad he's back on the team. And it seemed like it, the Atlanta staff just said, we're not going to cover for you. You need to go back out there. You need to tell people what happened and you need to apologize. And it looked like he did. I haven't really seen him streaming much. So hopefully he's um, you know, working on himself and, and sticking to that. And I look forward to seeing what he can do. So that's my thoughts on the DeFran situation. It is over. Um, it, it is behind us. I wanted to, to give some final thoughts before we really moved on from it. So let's move on from it. All right, guys. Next up, uh, I had mentioned Fran backing DeFran up. Um, but something else she's been doing that I've seen is she's been really pushing her YouTube channel. So when I announced that she was our, our partner streamer, I mentioned that her, her stream was her number one source of interaction and, and what you should really follow. I wouldn't you know bank on the YouTube channel. But ever since then, she's actually been making tweets and putting up new videos. Uh, she put a video up about her interview with Jeff Kaplan at BlizzCon. Um, she put a really funny uh, um, video with, with clips from one of her uh, streams the other night on it. it it's, so she's working on that as well. And definitely check her out. Definitely check the YouTube channel out and uh, support our uh, resident streamer. Um, other big news involving Atlanta Rain is that we now have an official Discord. And not only is it an official Discord, it is the fan Discord that has been made official. So, grats to Blitz, the uh, the founder, all the mod team who are remaining on as the mod team. Uh, it has been, the keys have, uh, have been passed on to the staff but they let a lot of the spirit and soul of the the discord and what has been built remain so it is a it is a great place and um i i think it with it being official it's it's going to become even better so congrats to all you guys happy to be there and, and definitely come check out the discord if you haven't already more atlanta rain news and more staff being hired we're getting a chef. So there was a post put up from the Atlanta Rain uh, saying that uh, they are looking for a cook that can chef it up with the best of them. Now, this um, this is for a chef to move out to California for, it looks like, season two. They're looking for a three meals a day, five days a week. So it looks like just kind of dur during the week, which is understandable. And one interesting thing I, I uh, saw on this um, this posting was that they want someone with experience cooking for you know teams and large groups also with a uh, um, uh, talent for cooking worldwide cuisine because of how diverse our team is and then someone who has lived in Korea for several years ideally five years and have a firm understanding of Korean culture and cuisine so with the Korean uh, players that we have on staff as well as how popular Korean cuisine and Korean barbecue has become with Overwatch League teams, I think it's awesome that they're reaching out and making sure someone has that experience. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see who we pick up. I know that Chef Heidi has become her own personality up at Fusion, and I really hope that the chef we pick up for Atlanta can, uh, can really be another strong personality on our team. Um, the, the last thing I want to get into is a contest that Atlanta Rain is running um, that actually should be ending probably in the next day or so. So jump on it and that is uh, they're giving away tickets to dreamhack atlanta and uh, for those unaware dreamhack is a it's a bit, essentially a big land uh, party a very very big land party uh, you can sign up get a table spot and bring your computer and play with a bunch of people but it has evolved into an entire convention basically there's going to be uh, tournaments for uh, halo hearthstone counter-strike bunch of stuff like that fighting games bunch of different fighting games um 
There's going to be the High Res Expo, so the World Championships of uh, Smite and Paladins are going to be there. That whole expo has been moved there. It sounds like a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and uh, the important part for us is that we're going to have a little bit of staff there. So uh, if you if you're able, um, definitely definitely try to get the the tickets. If not. Come out anyway. I think it's like thirty dollars for a day pass. Come on out Friday or Saturday. From what I understand, the JPs, both of them, and uh, Paul are going to be there. So I'm looking forward to shaking some hands and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys there. So that's what I have for this week, guys. Uh, it's it's uh, been strangely and crazily news filled. Uh, hopefully, next time I talk to you guys, I will be going over my trip to DreamHack and meeting a couple members of the crew, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and last but not least, with um, the the rocky road uh, being walked by certain organizations in the, uh, in the Tier 2 scene and, and just in general, I want to give a special shout out to our social media team and the fan outreach, JP, killing it as always, uh, for your professionalism. And, uh, yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, ask someone. There's been a lot of drama going on in the social outreach for some teams, and it makes me even happier and more proud of the team and staff that we have built. So, yes. Anyway, guys, that's what I have this week. Uh, check back with me next week. I'll have some stories from uh, DreamHack, and uh, hopefully I'll see you there. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.